Hello everyone, and welcome. Scientists have achieved some incredible temperature extremes. The hottest ever recorded in a particle accelerator reached an astonishing 5 trillion Kelvin. On the flip side, the coldest human-made temperature dipped to a mere 0.0038 Kelvin, equivalent to minus 273.14 degrees Celsius or minus 459.66 degrees Fahrenheit. But what does hotter or colder truly mean? Why does one object feel hotter than another? And what exactly is absolute zero? This mysterious temperature fixed at minus 273.15 degrees Celsius or minus 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit? This video will unravel these questions, exploring the profound implications of absolute zero, the ultimate limit of cold in our universe, and the fascinating physics that defines it. Energy is the fundamental bedrock of the universe, permeating every single thing within it and driving its every function. In fact, a staggering 70% of the universe's total content is energy, specifically, dark energy. This enigmatic force is something scientists know is present, yet they remain unable to interact with it. Making it seem almost ghostly, energy manifests in countless forms, dictating the motion of objects, fueling chemical reactions, and shaping natural phenomena. As the world's most famous equation, E equals mc squared, demonstrates, even matter itself is merely a highly concentrated form of energy. Something you can physically touch. If you weigh 70 kilograms, congratulations, you are a walking energy source. Equivalent to the explosive power of 1.5 billion tons of TNT. That's 30 Tsar Bomba nuclear devices or 100,000, little boy, atomic bombs. Humans and many animals perceive heat through specialized nerve endings called thermoreceptors, which are sensitive enough to distinguish temperatures ranging from minus 10 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. But consider this. A pot of water, whether frozen solid or vigorously boiling, contains the same number of water molecules, chemically remaining hydrogen oxide. So, why do they have different temperatures? The core of temperature lies in the motion of atoms and molecules. Every atom and molecule is constantly vibrating. Even those within a solid iron block or a diamond. As you might recall, anything in motion possesses energy, known as kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is directly proportional to an object's mass and velocity. Therefore, the faster atoms move, the greater their kinetic energy. And the higher their temperature. In essence, an object's temperature is the average kinetic energy of its constituent molecules. In simpler terms, the faster the molecules in an object move, the greater their average kinetic energy. And the hotter the object becomes, and vice versa. When you heat an ice cube or a steel bar, the molecules absorb energy, causing them to vibrate increasingly fast. Eventually, they might even separate, literally entering a state of free floating. This is how ice melts or steel liquefies. However, there's a less noticed phenomenon. Increasing temperature is always significantly easier than decreasing it. You can easily boil water to 100 degrees Celsius. A simple wood fire can generate around 600 degrees Celsius. Add coal, and you can melt almost anything in your house with a 1,900 degrees Celsius flame in just a few minutes. But please, don't try this at home. Conversely, to create an ice cube at around minus 10 degrees Celsius. You need a refrigerator and several hours. Why is reducing temperature so much harder than increasing it? And why is temperature the only measurement scale with negative values? Why do you have minus 10 degrees Celsius but not minus 50 meters or minus 1 kilogram? To answer these questions, let's take a trip back to 1714, when the German-born Polish physicist and inventor Gabriel Fahrenheit created the temperature scale. That bears his name, known today as the Fahrenheit scale. Fahrenheit established his scale by defining three fixed temperature points. He placed his thermometer in a cold mixture of ice, water, and ammonium chloride. At the lowest point the thermometer registered, Fahrenheit set zero degrees Fahrenheit as his benchmark. The second reference point was the temperature at which water just froze, which Fahrenheit designated as 30 degrees Fahrenheit. The third calibration point, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, was defined as the normal human body temperature measured by placing the thermometer in the armpit or mouth. Today, on the Fahrenheit scale, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. While normal human body temperature is considered 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, the Fahrenheit scale remained the most important temperature scale in English-speaking countries until the 1970s. 
Today, it has been almost entirely replaced by the Celsius scale, except in the United States, which stubbornly continues to use Fahrenheit alongside quirky imperial units like pounds, inches, and feet. The Celsius scale was first proposed by the Swedish astronomer Anders Celsius in 1742. Interestingly, it was initially inverted compared to what we know today. Water boiled at zero degrees and froze at 100 degrees. Later, scientists reversed it but kept the name to honor Celsius. Clearly, the Celsius scale is simpler, more intuitive, and better suited for everyday life. However, both of these temperature scales share a fundamental flaw. They are too far removed from the scientific definitions of temperature we discussed earlier. Both the Celsius and Fahrenheit temperature values are conventional, meaning they are set for convenience rather than adhering to strict scientific rules. From a scientific perspective, temperature, much like length or mass, should not have negative values. The lowest possible temperature can only be zero, and from a purely scientific standpoint, zero temperature is like the speed of light. Everyone desires to reach it, but there's simply no way to get there. In reality, absolute zero is a scenario you wouldn't even want to dream about. If you're not entirely forgetful, you'll recall that temperature is directly related to the vibrational motion of the particles that make up matter. The slower these particles dance, the lower the temperature. This logically implies that there must exist a temperature point where all motion ceases completely. That, fundamentally, is absolute zero. So why is absolute zero considered unattainable? What do we even hope to achieve by reaching it? And what exactly is so mysterious about absolute zero that we've been hinting at its dangers throughout this video? Absolute zero is easily achievable in our imagination by simply assuming that all particles of matter stop moving. And this is where things get truly chilling. In 1802, French chemist and physicist Joseph Gay Lussac discovered that at constant pressure, the volume of a gas changes proportionally with temperature. Specifically, when the temperature changes by 1 degree Celsius, the volume of a gas changes by 1 273rd of its volume at 0 degrees Celsius. To put it simply, this discovery means that when any gas is cooled down to minus 273 degrees Celsius, its volume would become zero, effectively causing it to disappear. Yes, disappear, a word science greatly dislikes. An ordinary person might have crumpled up such a bizarre calculation and tossed it in the trash. A superstitious individual might have even championed it as the devil's formula, the end of the universe. But Gay Lussac was a scientist, and he drew a different conclusion. That minus 273 degrees Celsius was the lowest possible temperature in the universe. Unbeknownst to him, he was profoundly correct and proclaimed it loudly. Later, British physicist and mathematician William Thomson, also known as Lord Kelvin, developed an absolute temperature scale with no negative values, named the Kelvin scale. On the Kelvin scale, 0 Kelvin, 0 K, signifies absolute zero. To convert Celsius to Kelvin, one simply adds 273.15 to the Celsius temperature. For example, 0 degrees Celsius equals 273.15 Kelvin. But the more crucial question is, what is the true nature of absolute zero? 0 Kelvin is equivalent to minus 273.15 degrees on the Celsius scale or minus 459.67 degrees on the Fahrenheit scale. Why must atoms and molecules stop at precisely 0 Kelvin? or exactly minus 273.15 degrees Celsius, and not any other value? The answer is, only God knows. The precise value of absolute zero is one of countless values that appear to be fine-tuned and pre-set for the operation of the universe. Much like the speed of light, the mass of an electron, or the number of spatial dimensions. We shouldn't, and indeed cannot, analyze them further beyond accepting that this is simply how things are in our universe. While we can't explain why absolute zero is what it is, we do know what happens to matter as it approaches this limit. As temperature rises, atoms accelerate, breaking apart and floating freely, transforming solids into liquids. This process continues with further temperature increases. Matter becomes so unconstrained that even in its liquid state, it expands and vaporizes, then can even turn into plasma. A bizarre yet equally wondrous state of matter. Most of the matter in our sun and other stars exists in this plasma state. In fact, plasma, not solid, liquid, or gas, is the most common state of matter in the universe. Conversely, if we conduct a reverse experiment and start decreasing the temperature, the cooled particles begin to slow down, condensing into a liquid, 
then solidifying into a solid. Inside a solid, particles are packed very closely, arranged neatly, yet they still continue to vibrate. Further decreasing the temperature causes the particles in the solid to vibrate less and less, until they almost stop. And it's crucial to remember those two words, almost. Just as you would need infinite energy to accelerate a cosmic battleship to the speed of light, absolute zero is simply unattainable. Energy is never created or destroyed, it merely transforms from one place to another, from one form to another. When an object is cooled, say, an isolated heart on a freezing winter day, it releases heat into its surroundings. The problem is, the closer an object gets to absolute zero, the less heat it radiates. This means that at lower temperatures, further cooling becomes increasingly inefficient and energy intensive. According to the principles of thermodynamics, you would require an infinite amount of energy. To cool something down to absolute zero, to put it into perspective, becoming a type 3, type 7, or even a type 753 civilization, is easier than creating absolute zero. Furthermore, there's another issue. At absolute zero, the measure of disorder, or entropy, would be zero. Which the third law of thermodynamics strictly forbids. And it doesn't stop there. If particles were to completely stop moving, meaning they were perfectly still. Then logically, we would be able to simultaneously determine both their exact position and momentum. However, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, a fundamental tenet of quantum mechanics, also prohibits this. In essence, absolute zero is like a doll in a glass cabinet. You can see it, talk about it, but you can't actually touch it. End of story. But there's no need to be sad, because the most fascinating discoveries lie just before the absolute limit. In the process of deep cooling, scientists have uncovered incredible, counterintuitive properties that defy ordinary laws of physics. Specifically, very close to absolute zero, some metals almost completely lose their electrical resistance. They become the legendary ideal conductors, allowing electricity to flow through with virtually no loss. This phenomenon is called superconductivity. Gases are no less spectacular. Helium gas transforms into a liquid at minus 269 degrees Celsius. As the temperature continues to drop, a seemingly magical phenomenon occurs. The viscosity, that is, the resistance to flow, of liquid helium becomes zero. When you pour water into a glass, the water stays in the cup. That's just how life works, right? But when you pour superfluid helium into a glass, it flows. Or more accurately, leaks through the incredibly tiny capillaries and gaps in the glass molecules. Down to the bottom of the cup, and out. A thin film of helium can climb over the container walls and flow out. Forming a drip underneath, it can also create a frictionless fountain that can flow perpetually. If that's not magic, what is? And